Um, composition is what takes a normal picture to make it into a beautiful photograph. So um, you can take a picture of something very common, frame it correctly, get everything looking right, balance the picture right, put the points of interest in the right spots, and uh, you get that picture to look um, extremely, extremely nice. And uh, that's what I'm gonna teach you to do. So that's what I'm gonna show you. Uh, if you just bear with me for a few minutes and uh, you'll come out of this a winner. So, <laughs> uh, enjoy. All right, now in composition, there are what people call rules and the, you know, there's different things. Uh, I don't believe in rules. I believe uh, everything you do, you, know, you, can, you can adjust however you wanna do it. If you, know, if you feel putting something smack dab in the center is appealing to you, then by all means do it. Uh, but anyhow, there is something called a rule of thirds, and what the rule of thirds is is if you um, if you cut your picture into like, like think of putting a, a tic tac toe grid on your picture. You know, you got two lines going this way, two going this way. There's um, what you want to do is put your points of interest um, onto the lines, the, the thirds over here, over here, and uh, that's that's where you want to put what's the focus of your picture is into these different spots. You want to avoid the center. Um, somehow it just makes the picture more appealing. So try it, see how you feel with it. That's the, that's, it's called the rule of thirds, but like I said, there are no rules, do what you wanna do. Um, and it's very simple, it's a very simple concept and it's easy, to, it's easy to follow when you look in your camera. You know, if you focus in the center, focus in the center and then just shift a little to the side and get it. it there's nothing in your camera that's gonna show you. You have to you know, imagine it. So you have to have your imagination, which you know, for an artist, I'm sure it's easy. So, um, you know, um, Use your imagination when you're looking through that thing. See the, see the tic-tac-toe, focus in the center, move it over, over and up. And so you have it on the points, the intersecting lines on those four points that are there. That's, those are like the, the key spots. Those are the places that you want to put your, um, your focus of interest. And that's the basics of the rule of thirds. Very simple stuff. Another very important part of, um, of composition is uh, to give a sense of perspective. So you, know, you accomplish that by using the, the correct lenses and the, the correct focal length. Um, what's gonna, what a perspective is all about is showing people, giving them a depth, giving them a, a feeling of, of, of three dimensions so that they could see you know, where you were seen from. And, and basically, um, I, like, I like the idea of wide angle lenses to show a perspective. It gives a, a greater idea of volume and space of where you were. Um, so, you know, if, if that's what you're looking for and that's the idea you want to convey is, you know, the, how big something is or how spacious or you could show those things in a still photograph by just concentrating and, and, and focusing on the, the perspective and knowing that you're presenting this perspective to people and, and, you know, they can see things basically from your perspective, from your eyes, the way you saw it, you use your camera to, to show that. Um, perspective is a big part of pictures. It can, you know, take an everyday picture and, and you know, turn it into an award-winning photograph or into a beautiful you know, work of art that you could sell and make money with or however you want to do. So uh, perspective, you know, find nice angles, cool you know, different vantage points and, and give that perspective, give that, that visual of you know, what you want it to convey. You know, if you want to convey the perspective of a bug, you know, get close to the floor and, and lay down if you have to and take a picture up and get that idea of you know the huge world around this small thing so you know that's uh, that's perspective for you and that's another thing in composition that you know you can focus on and, and concentrate on um, another thing in that you can keep in mind when you're doing your um, your compositions is um, <clears throat> lines and patterns so um, lines uh, lines can really add to the perspective of a picture and they can also lead uh, your, what do you call the person looking at your picture? I guess your audience, you lead your, you lead, uh, you lead your audience's eyes to a specific point in the picture by using lines. Uh, if you, if you, there's lines everywhere and you can use lines to, you can use them as leading lines, you can use them just to set up the structure of a picture. Um, lines are very important and they're everywhere, you can see them, they're, you know, if you just learn to see uh, the world around you and see it through a photographic, you know, through a photographer's mind, then you can see things and then you know how to line things up and get everything working out um, so that you can get, you know, these lines, you know, fade away or they, they, they draw your attention somewhere or they, they just really make a striking image. So, you know, keep that in mind. Lines are always really good. Like I said, patterns, patterns as well. You know, if you see patterns that, you know, fade away patterns and different patterns, 
Uh, for some reason, you know, the, the human brain likes to see that. You know, I don't know if it just makes you think or, or what it does, but you know, it, if you see something that you find interesting and you want to take a picture of it, do it. You know, chances are uh, somebody else or you know a thousand other people or a million other people are going to think that it's interesting too. You know, you know, we're not we're not all that unique. So um, you know, even though you are a little snowflake, when when you see patterns that you want to do photographs of. Um, you know, they're out there, they're everywhere, just like lines, patterns are everywhere, um, and they make for great photographs. So something about them is interesting and people love them. Another fundamental of composition is balance. Um, and balance can be achieved, um, you know, by having two items of the same size on both sides of the picture. Um, I also, you know, I'm a big fan of balancing a picture with, with empty space on one side and, and a filled space on the other. Some people will say that's, that's off balance, but to me, it can bring balance to a picture if you have, you know, something here and nothing here, they, they'll balance each other. It's, you know, it's negative space and positive space and it works out. So, you know, you don't always have to have two things in your picture to have a balance. You can, you can use space and filled space. Uh, and that's just my philosophy. That's, that's the way I like to see it. Um, you know, like I said, these, these aren't rules. They're very bendable. They're very breakable. And, uh, you know, you make them, wh whatever you find in your pictures, you know, that you like or what you find in other people's pictures that you like, use it, you know. So, you know, balancing a picture, like I said, you know, is, it's, it's so that the picture doesn't hurt your eyes to look at it or it's, you know, it's not, uh, it, it's, it's, it doesn't just feel funky to look at it. Sometimes pictures feel like they're going to fall over or something. You know, me personally, I, I like, I like all kinds of pictures, you know, if it's, if it's striking, it's striking. But uh, balance is something that, you know, is weighed on, you know, very importantly. And, uh, you know, it's like I said, you know, it's, it's part of composition and there's a lot to composition. Um, and, you know, if you keep all these things in mind, you, you know, you get fine pictures. So. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, simplicity. Make your pictures nice and simple. Um, you know, this again goes to isolation, uh, but it's also, it's, it's on a different level of, um, you know, not keeping things, you know, too complex, don't make people work too hard to see what you're trying to show. And uh, you know, the simplicity, sometimes the most simple things are, are beautiful, you know. Uh, I personally am a big fan of uh, Macintosh and pretty much everything they do, Mac computers and whatnot. But if you look at a Mac computer, it's, it's the simplest design, you know, they're, they're simple, they have, you know, very defined lines, uh, very smooth textures, and the, the, if you look at, you know, even Mac's advertising, everything like that, you know, they're, they're simple. It's simple and it's, it's beautiful. So, you know, if you can, if you can use, you know, you know, if you're taking pictures of, you know, objects or whatever, and, and instead of having it on a desk or, you know, and, you know, with stuff around it, if you could isolate it and put it onto, you know, a white anything, um, you know, or any solid color and just simplify the picture. Take out the background. Don't, don't, don't have anything distracting in your picture that doesn't belong there. Anything that's not necessary to convey the message that you want to convey, remove it, you know, remove it before you shoot it. Uh, and then shoot the picture and you know, project what you want to project and only that what you want to project and that is simplicity. So, you know, simplicity is one of the things that is, you know, something that I enjoy in photographs and, uh, you know, maybe you do too. I don't pretend to know too much about the equation behind the, the um, divine proportion, but I do know that it makes this cool little spiral and it's something that's found in nature everywhere. The different proportions, um, the spiral is found something that like uh, in a snail shell or in seashells and different things, but there's a spiral. It's also, it's also a shape of, of square. So one smaller square with a bigger square above it, but when you graph it all out. So anyhow, the divine proportion, uh, if placed over a picture, um, can be used as some sort of a template to see. Uh, it just makes beautiful pictures. When, when a picture is, is placed where that spiral leads to the direct focus of the picture or, or that's the spot that you want to be the main focus of the picture, if you lay a divine proportion over that and it happens to land there, for some reason it's just a good way to check if your uh, picture is composed correctly. It just looks great. looks fantastic. So, um, you know, the divine proportion, it's, you know, it's a, it's a very uh, abstract concept, even though it's a very specific uh, mathematical equation. Uh, but it's a way to, to just check your composition and, um, you know, you'll know if something looks good. You don't have to have someone tell you it looks good for you to know it looks good. But um, the divine proportion is just, you know, uh, um, a way to double check it. It's a second opinion. So, um, you know, that's what the divine proportion is and, and that's how it uh, applies to um, uh, composition in your photography.